over and done. No. So my name is John Jacoby. Uh, I work for Automatic and am the lead developer of Buddy Press and uh, BB Press 2.0. So after calling John, I renamed my awesome plugin development because what he did was advanced. What I'm going to show you is not that awesome. But it is pretty awesome. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, plugin development specifically. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about it. I'm going to do a live demo. I also want you guys to ask questions if you have them as I go. Uh, I have a lot of things I'm going to touch on. And uh, traditionally, when I talk about what you pressed up, a lot of questions pop up at the end or in the middle of it. Uh, so I want to leave some time and let this be mostly for you guys. Uh, so how many of you have used Buddy Press ever? Awesome! Yay! Uh, what about BB Press outside of Buddy Press? So you've used it? Okay, so that's a little bit less. It's kind of what I figured. So, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the decisions that we make while we are Developing Buddy Press and BB Press. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we do it, uh, sort of in tandem with WordPress 4 at the same time. Uh, and I'm going to touch on a lot of the things that you probably already you already know because you're plugin developers, you're game developers. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, working uh, alongside the core developers at the same time while trying to keep up with developments that go into WordPress Trunk. Uh, and kind of touch on a lot of those different things. So if you have questions as I go, uh, Luke has a mic going around eventually, raise your hand and Luke will give you the mic and we'll sort of have this be an open impromptu you know, kind of thing while I barely wave my hands around all over the place. So, uh, so with WordPress, obviously you guys are familiar with all the components, down to pages, posts, links, themes, plugins, you guys are all super familiar with all those things. You know that underneath all of them are huge amounts of API and code that go in and make those things function individually, right? So the same thing happens inside of BuddyPress, right? So BuddyPress is just one plugin that you can turn on and, and, and you install. But it comes with all these extra additional components that you can choose to use or not use if you want to. And uh, a common mistake that people make when they use BuddyPress is they activate it and turn it on, and then they just use it as it is, or they find a the theme, and they try to make their website fit into what it is that BuddyPress provides. And really, the goal should be sort of the opposite, right? Like, you have a WordPress site, you don't necessarily use one. So let's use a link for a blog roll recently. Okay, so that, right, exactly. So you might, not have, you might not need friends on your website. You might not need groups. You might not need forums, even. But what you might need are profiles. So you can turn WordPress on and just use it if you want. You don't need to use every single component and then try to make your website fit into it. Uh, but, so as we're, as we're developing alongside WordPress Trunk, we're actively developing BuddyPress at the same time. So while WordPress has branches, 3.2, 3.2.1, 3.2.2, all these things, and while we're actively developing Trunk, BuddyPress has the exact same thing. We're mirroring our developments. We have our own tags uh, and our own branches and our own Trunk that when a security bug comes out of WordPress, we sort of have to do a zero day and make sure that BuddyPress, the current version, works at the exact same time that we're still developing on Trump. So the, the way that as plugin developers, and that's just it, like, so I'm, I'm a core contributor, but I like, I am rooted in plugin development. So if you've written a plugin, you, you've done exactly pretty much what I do in my day-to-day -day job. The only difference is I do it with a library of code that is almost as big as WordPress is itself. So if your page are my page, things that you want fixed are the exact same things that I want fixed and, and able to sort of try to influence and fix and write some code over on the WordPress.org site to help those things out. And we'll move to BeePress 2.0. So if you have uh, paid a little bit of attention, uh, BeePress has been rewritten from empty, from an empty branch uh, with some stuff backported that was really awesome from the original BeePress into a plugin for WordPress. So when you saw the components that we had in WordPress, you can see our forms a little bit more simple, right? We just have forms, topic replies, and I included topic, topic views because a lot of times, I don't know, if you how many people are active on WordPress.org on the forums that are there? Uh, that makes me sad inside. Oh. Uh, 
So we use Topic Views to show um, like a lot of like uh, support forms, support topics that are uh, open or resolved uh, or that are not support topics at all. So we use Topic Views in, in some ways to, they're not like categories, not like tags, all they really are just like another group of topics. So I include them here just so you can see that it's another group of topics. And then all the things that plugins and core and buddy press and BB press should do are uh, the exact same things, obviously, that WordPress core does. You want to pay attention to WordPress security updates that come through because maybe your plugin was doing something incorrectly. Of course, maybe there was a function notification that you are no longer keeping up with. And we do that, right? So we have to keep track of all those individual things that happen security-wise when something comes through. So every dot release of WordPress that comes through, we actively go through active versions of buddy press and even press uh, internationalization, the internationalization and localization. So these plugins are huge, right? They have huge uh, amounts of translatable strings, and we have to make sure that, that all of those individual strings are able to be translated. Buddy Press is translated into 16 different languages or something now. BB Press, like BB Press 1.0 has quite a few more. 2.0, I think, only has three or four so far, but people are still going through and translating all those strings. And then right to left support, I'll show you something really neat if you have never used the uh, RTL plugin. Uh, I'll show you how that works in a, in a little bit. Just kind of try and pull off live demo. We'll see how good that goes. Uh, actions and filters. I talked to a couple of people so far this weekend that uh, are awesome PHP developers that are really good at what they do. Uh, they understand WordPress and how to be able to get it through, but they don't have a whole lot of experience with how actions and filters and those things work. And as a, as a plugin developer, or even if you're making understanding how actions and filters works is uh, pivotal. It's, it's an eye-opening experience. As soon as you learn and you use your first action filter and you watch it work, you realize like, how, how everything in WordPress operates. Uh, BuddyPress and BBPress both come up their own default themes to get you started so that you're able to ramp them up and go if you want to play something out with them. And BBPress too comes with something that uh, I will get that ported into WordPress, which lets you use any, uh, say, a majority of, of, of WordPress themes that are conventional, so they shall take over everything, use their own kind of file locations all over the place. If you have a conventional theme, 2011, 2010, uh, default theme, BBPress 2.0 will fit itself inside wherever it is that it needs to go. So we're going to do the same thing with WordPress. We're going to let you use whatever WordPress theme that you have. We're going to intercept some queries and then flip the content in the middle wherever it belongs. And then you just have to do some CSS tweaks. <laughs> so I'll show you a little bit how that works too. Uh, we have to worry about our own installation routine. We don't need to load. WordPress has a bunch of extra database tables, which I know is like a bad thing. There's only so many things that you can fit into the WordPress database in order to make sense to do it. Uh, updates, so if we do decide to change something, we have our own updates. Just like WordPress 4 has updates. Uh, we have our own short codes. We have to worry about multi site. Uh, which is a huge thing uh, with plugin press and BB press because you can have unlimited uh, configurations, right? Like you can have one site in the middle, you can have, you might want a bunch of button plugin presses, you might want to have a bunch of little things that you can over this. You might want to have one support form in the middle, or you might want to have several support forms on each site. And maybe those, those sites only want their own dedicated user base, or maybe you want a global user base. You have all these different configurations, and you have to take all those things into account while they're going through this stuff. And then, uh, the biggest one that probably we struggle with BuddyPress the most is that just dependability. Uh, because BuddyPress has changed and evolved over the years so so rapidly while WordPress was advancing too. You think of 3.0 when, uh, when we merged multi-site in and then we introduced custom post types. That BuddyPress comes sort of from an age when none of those things really existed. So we had to support an individual multi-site library of BuddyPress and then we had to support a single site library of WordPress. And we didn't always have the same function available between. So it was one plugin in the middle of the two completely separate WordPress installations. So those are those are all kind of individually unique accounts that we have to go through while we're while we're building on all these things. So the status on BuddyPress where it is, which is uh, which is super incredible now that I've had to take a look back and see what's happening. Uh, so 1.3 has been a really long development cycle, and uh, it's attributed to uh, myself just shifting around and working on 
trust for a little bit. Uh, two of the other four committers are independent. They are consultants, uh, so they work on their own time also. And uh, and there was a lot of cleanup that we needed to do. I don't know if you've ever if you've ever installed like the or Buddy 1.2 and you had to leave the debug on and just spit out like a bunch of spaghetti crap all over the place. So we had to go through and clean up all that stuff because it was all it was all really difficult to go through between two separate WordPress versions to try and figure out all of those individual little traps that we were running into. So we went through and cleaned up all those things. So there were 788 complete like total tickets that people had filed for bugs that we that we closed so that we acknowledge and went through. And 488 of those were actual documented like bugs like, that you could reproduce and say, okay, this maybe isn't working exactly the way that it needs to work. Uh, which uh, which kind of just made us sad when we started looking at it because it, it's really powerful and those all this really neat stuff. We put a lot of time and effort into it, but the amount of bugs that we were finding was just really broke our hearts a little bit. A uh, quick point of clarification. Sure. Can you, in the elevator, can you say what's between body press and BB press? Yes. Why would you use one or the other? Yes. That's a good question. Uh, I'll get to that after the next slide, and then we can address some of that too. Uh, so, in 1.3, the we spent a lot of time working on extracting the way that those nine now individual components are built, which actually touches a little bit on the WP plugin thing that I applied for or everyone looking like I was crazy. Uh, the WP plugin thing is a huge, huge thing. And uh, some of that structure comes from the way that Buddy Press and the components have been rewritten and the way that BD Press 2.0 has been rewritten. And we'll go through some code and I'll show you a little bit about how that works in a second. Uh, we refreshed the default theme because what we saw from all of our users were that you would, a lot of the times you would install BuddyPress and because it has to have a BuddyPress theme, you would use the default theme and then just make a child theme of it and then hack it with some CSS or some you know, custom template pieces where you needed it. But all that happens is all of your BuddyPress sites that you see in the world just look the same. Right? You don't have that level of customization. You sort of feel like you have with WordPress because you're able to customize it easy with theme and template sites. And everybody's really comfortable with seeing how one theme works and just hacking it to bits and making it down and you know, making it better. So we customize the default. We actually put something you would want to use instead of just showing off how things work. Uh, so if uh, I don't have a link in my slide, if you go to testvp.org, is where we have a site set up, which is just WordPress Trump, WordPress Trump, that we use as a test site for people to go to. So I have four post content in so that we have real life user content that we can just see and interact with so that we can know how we should be adapting BuddyPress to the future of the way that users use it. Uh, and then we refresh the admin default. So the, the 3.1 or 3.2, uh, the WordPress admin is obviously all new. Uh, and so we put a uh, fresh coat of paint on the admin UI so that it makes a little bit more sense on how you're supposed to use it. So then on the other side of it, the status of BuddyPress is for 2.0, which uh, we had a, a really awesome amount of beta testers come through for something that is just formed inside of WordPress. Uh, so there were almost 200 tickets. There were 148 documented bugs that were either from code that we forwarded from standalone or from how we were handling a lot of the individual things like multi site or user metacaps and roles and all of the, uh, all the things that like, uh, a social plugin has to worry about is that you're going to control uh, on your own side of the there's only 12 tickets left, so it's almost, it's almost probably ready for the release candidate. And the, the, the biggest part is that it's now a plugin for WordPress. So the, if you've used BB Press before, and you, I mean, how many people have tried to integrate it with their existing WordPress install? So user tables and cookies and all those things. And how many hours did you bang your head against it to make it work? And then find out that like you couldn't log into one area, or it would log you out of another, and then like your theme didn't look right, and then like re-theme everything. And you went through it, right? And at, at the time when we were done with it, you were like, yeah, this is awesome. It works, it rules, I'm awesome, everything's great. And all of a sudden, like one more thing is broken. And then like a cookie doesn't work, and then you log out from someone that So we So we eventually, first we packaged it inside the body. So we were like, okay, well, we can just. We just wrap it around so we can install it much. We can make it work. Uh, but then we're like, well, you know, it still isn't 
still doesn't fit right. So we attached them to groups, it was forms, and we did the wrong thing. And uh, so now it's just a plug flat out for WordPress. So it's uh, almost like a one or two click install to make your forms, and then it kind of just works. So we're going to take a lot of that out, we're going to pull that back into the plugin as we go. Uh, use the custom post types and taxonomy. So if you use custom post types, if you're familiar with how custom taxonomies work, then you are right at home with the press too. And the idea is that it was sort of rewritten from, from the ground up, 100% PHP doc, uh, so that when it comes time to either use that code as an example for how you might want to do it yourself, or for blank contributors hopefully want to start documenting and helping us document the code that's in there, then it's painfully easy, right? You have super verbose uh, descriptions of what it is that functions and classes and things do, and how it is that you would want to use it when you go in and you open up a file and you can say, okay, well, what's it do? You can just read the paragraph right above it. The normal PHP doc is just exactly what it does. And uh, so we really wanted to concentrate on making sure that those things were easy to use so that you were able to learn and adapt uh, your website or everything you need to use the press too. And then think compatibility, which I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, and then I'll even walk through a little bit how it works. So I've only got 45 minutes when we have questions and stuff, but I'm going to try and kind of way through some things. And then I'm going to go over some stuff that I use. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to use it, obviously. Everybody has their own, their own kind of situation. You just go to these text and make windows, you're all set. Uh, and I'm going to go over some stuff that I use. Uh, I know Jeremy Clark's going to look like one of them. And uh, I'm going to talk about some of that stuff here. So, first off, we use Terminal Duck, right? Like, you are uh, a Windows user that you probably like, but uh, it, so the funny story about this is I only recently converted from, from uh, a Windows machine to Mac like two years ago myself, and I wasn't 100% fluent and plus, like, just comfortable using Terminal, so I always had, like, uh, like no Mac plus plus and WAN and everything else, and then as I was developing remotely, it was always just as if you something up, and uh, maybe logging in with Putty, doing like an SDN over all those kind of things, but I was never 100% fluent with it. And after you know, using it for a few years, I was fine. So the fact that I, got, I, got, I was able to not use Terminal for as long as I was, and forgot a lot of what I used to know from using Windows and DOS and from free one Windows, Windows for work groups, and I knew how to do all those things, and I lost all that. So I pulled it out of the edit to get us of that. Uh, and I use Mac Pro, and, and there are a few different reasons why I use it. Um, and I know that a lot of people use Mac Pro, so they use other different things. But I use Mac Pro uh, because it's, it's its own library and it lives in its own place. And I don't have to mess with it, right? It's the exact same reason why I have an iPhone and I don't have an Android phone. So I have an Android phone, I would play with it all day. I would customize it, it awesome, I'd trick it out, I would love it to be like my custom phone. But I have an iPhone because I, I don't have time to do that stuff. I would love to but if I had that option, I would play with my phone all the time instead of being able to play on button press media press. So it, it just works. This is probably the main reason why you can't grow. Plus, it comes with an button, um, which I think I had a slide for, and I might still. So we'll see if I get to XD button. How many people here use XD button? Okay, so I'm going to talk about, I'm going to show off some of XD button. So you guys might be bored for a little while, but I'm going to show off how XD button works. Um, uh, and then, yeah, man, it's just super easy to use. It comes everything all the like, right one kind of uh, XCBUG, here we go, yes. So XCBUG is just an extension for PHP that lets you do profiling and debugging while you're loading a page. So uh, when you think, how many people have used a program, how many people have not used debug, XCBUG, but have used like a compiler, like a compiler language, right? So you know how we get a compiler, you can pause it, you can stop it, you can see how things are going? Well, XCBUG is going to let you do that in PHP. So instead of having to bear down everything out and echo things out and see where you are and know what's going on and you have to try to chase the stuff down for a bunch of code. And the WordPress thing it makes it even more difficult because you have actions and hooks and it also throws you off in some weird time. You don't know why and how you end up there. Well, Nextdebug is going to save your life from all of, all of those things and all the hair that you're pulling out of your head. It will, it will speed up your development by you know, leaps and bounds, which is why I say time travel possible, right? Because you're able to speed up your development super, super rapidly. So I'm going to show you how that works too. And then uh, I use NetBeans. Uh, so I use NetBeans uh, 
your users on the front of your website. And somebody brought up that question earlier too about uh, about the difference between like using your stuff and everything like, within the WordPress dashboard or creating content or having your users posting on the front side of that website. And uh, then there are sort of two approaches, right? Like if you're using WordPress as content management, then you more than likely want your users in front of your website because those users might not have a blog. They might just be subscribers. They don't have editor access. They're not blogging. They're not doing anything. But they are registered users on your site. So for them to be able to create content, something like the press or the press or the plugin has to be able to do that in a real safe and effective way because you're allowing essentially an anonymous user who you don't know you haven't accepted that as a user to post stuff directly in your head. So if it's, uh, if it's uh, an attack, if somebody's trying to make sure that they can get you have to make sure all things are So if you're there, ED press is sort of the, the, the way, hopefully, uh, sort of written as a really good example of how plugin authors that want to have post forms on the front can use that code and snippets of it, take it out and see the best practices of how to do it. So that's what BBPress is for this whole course on the front. is like everything else that you have like, seen about social networking uh, or that you expect from a social network, uh, like something like Facebook or Yammer. Uh, we have an activity screen. We have like more elaborate profiles so you can actually drag it up and move your profile around so that you can, as a, as a site administrator, say, how does your profile work like this? How do you enter where you live? What do you do? What kind of dog you have? How old is it? What color is it? What kind of car you drive? Whatever. You want to handle those profiles with it. So, Buddy Press is the plugin that allows you to do that. So, it's really a, a much bigger scale of the social network. So, we use Buddy Press internally automatic for our teams. Uh, so we have different teams within automatic that work on different specific projects and initiatives. So we use white press groups, say groups or teams. If you're in this group, you're, you're part of this team. And uh, so that's how we use it internally with our team on our line. We use those folks for us to keep track of what we're doing within our ourselves. Uh, so it would be used for the internet, uh, college would be awesome. I have really like so we one of our teachers, uh, he uses Buddy Press uh, human academic accounts, uh, where uh, students have profiles, they're able to have their own blogs, they're able to post all things on what they're doing, and then they use groups uh, for uh, individual uh, programs within uh, human to allow them to collaborate, discuss things with each other on the uh, And he's one of the more committed on Buddy Press. So, uh, as those initiatives and things come across, he's able to sort of talk about them and see what fits and what goes on. Uh, so that's the difference. So Buddy Press has a form that you press that has a lot of other things as well? Right. So it, it, gets, it gets really weird, right? So, so Buddy Press currently includes E Press, one form, which was a standalone piece of software. You had to install it the same way that you did with WordPress. So you have to go through the install procedure and your database stuff, and it was its own thing. And we we still use BBPress on our .com support forums, on our org support forums, and we had a need, we even have one user account in the middle, and for that, you know, single sign up right? So if you log into WordPress.org and you go through our .com support forums, that login will carry over to our video forums. Another installed BB press for the same sign. So we built in a way that BB press and WordPress both talk to each other behind the scenes. And setting it up was not anywhere near like a turnkey thing. It wasn't just wanting to get up and go, but it looked like it was. The other needs to be able to set some config things, things like that. So it just got to be really difficult. And so with Buddy Press, we said, okay, let's just bring it in. We'll just bring BB press in. We already know how we're going to install it. We know how things are going to touch it. So let's just take all the stuff away from the computer setting and all that thing. Let's just only use the stuff we need. And I think all the guesswork and all of all our code work on it. And we attach forums to groups. And uh, so groups have to use forums by themselves. So we never have a central forum. And now if you press 2, eventually we're going to change some of that up a little bit over time. But right now there's still the group all content and have a Yes, so groups do have their own page and their own 